What's up, everybody? This is Talking All That Kaz, and I am DJ Casio. I want to thank you for checking out this particular episode of Talking All That Kaz. On this particular episode, I got another great interview that I conducted here on my radio show at 90.9 FM KCC in Salinas, California. But before we get going with that, I want you to go to this address, djcasio.com, and connect with me on social media, whether it's on my Facebook, on my Instagram, on my Twitter, or even if you go and subscribe to my Mixcloud channel, you can hear all my radio shows that I do in their entirety, music, commentary, and interviews. But this right here, talking all that Kaz, this is for just the interviews, okay? I want to thank everybody who checked out the first round of interviews that I put up. Now we're on to the second round. This particular round, I'm going to focus on 2019, but I'm going to sprinkle it in with some more current stuff too. So you never know what you're going to get. Just sit back, relax, and enjoy another edition of Talking All That Kaz with me, DJ Casio. That's right, that's right. It's 90.9 FM KHTC Radio Bilingue here in Salinas and Monterey as well. 104.1 FM out there in Hollister, San Juan Batista, and South Gilroy. Streaming live worldwide at WednesdayRec.com. Yours truly, Casio, right here. And I am joined by a very special guest joining us for the first time on the show. Let me get this right here. Jay Magicus. Mr. Magicus, you're there, right? Hey, what's up? Woo, woo. How's everything, guy? That's right, man. That's right. Brand new artists. Actually, you know what? You're not a brand new artist, but this is your first time being on this show. Uh, tell me a little bit about the the, the, the history of, of Magicus. Well, um, when I came into freestyle, um, I'm not like... I, I admit that when I first started, uh, it was about uh, nine years ago. I've been, I was mostly, um, when, I, when I first started, there was um, some old schoolers that were calling, were, that were really starting out their music, which is new school, mm -hmm. and I wasn't that familiar with freestyle at the time, um, so I started um, hanging around like the clubs that played freestyle, and then, and then, and then uh, from one moment to another, I, I decided, you know what, let me give a shot at this. I didn't know what to expect, I'll be honest with you, but I did love the music. I started, believe it or not, I, I first started out in Florida. I uh, went out to Florida to, to, to do my first gig at the time. Uh -huh. And then when I got there um, to Miami, I did my first track out there and ended up, believe it or not, I'm um, getting on a few, a few music videos, which then started getting me bookings around Florida. Um, I don't know if you know the artist called T Pain because he's more like hip hop. No, I know who that is. Yeah, uh, T Pain, Kanye West, and uh, and Akon. I I did a music video with them, and that kind of like started me off um, performing in different places and crafting my freestyle at that time. Right. And then from there, when I came back to New York. I got to do produce one track with uh, Carlos Barrios, mm -hmm. which, as you know, he's the, pretty much the man when it comes to freestyle, uh, especially up tempo type of freestyle, and that's when I did the song uh, "Can't Live Without You," right. uh, produced by him. And since then, I've been performing and honing my craft, doing different types of music, working with a lot of talented artists. To now, the point that I'm pretty much. Uh, constantly working with these guys and pushing the music, you know, because as we all know, freestyle is love. A lot of people, you know, uh, when they think of freestyle, they think of great memories from the past. Mm -hmm. So I want to continue bringing those memories through my new version of freestyle. No doubt, man, no doubt. You know, uh, just going back real quick to the thing about Carlos Barrios, you know what's funny about that is, and, and a time when, you know, freestyle got a lot of, like, radio airplay, like, in the late 80s and then around 1990. And then, you know, Carlos Barrio starts really, like, making noise with Lissette Melendez and Karina. And he starts, like, you know, producing in a way that he's, like, incorporating breakbeats, much the way hip-hop did, you know, and looping stuff and doing that kind of thing, right? 
So around that time, you know, a lot of established freestyle artists were kind of like uh, standoffish about that. They didn't want to go that way. They thought it wasn't traditional. They thought, you know, oh, you know, who's this guy, you know, trying to make this new style? And so kind of that new style that he was doing kind of, you know, only lasted like about a, a year and a half, two years until people reverted back to just simple drum machines and sampling Planet Rock and, you know, doing that kind of stuff. And then you look at it, you fast forward. And now over like the last like three years, everybody, it seems that's putting out new freestyle is going to Carlos Barrios to get production from him because they know he's that talented. You know, it, it's a crazy, it's a crazy thing. Like, you know, one era can, you know, crap on the guy and the next era, like really, you know, appreciates. You know, that happens a lot with people that are not only talented, but also ahead of of ahead of the game. You know, sometimes when you're a little bit ahead of your time coming up with new things, people are very comfortable with what they already know and mm -hmm. they're scared to venturing on something new. I'm just grateful that he actually stood the course because look at it now. Now all the new school artists are coming out with their tracks. They're coming out with beats that are a little bit more faster, a little bit more modern, mm -hmm. straying away from the Planet Rock beat, which is a good thing because, you know, you can only play a, a beat so long before, you know, you can't beat a dead horse. Well, um, yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, after, after Little Susie used it, it was done. You know, everybody else who used it after that was like, why are you doing that? Exactly. You know, so and, and I'm just I'm just grateful that I've that I've been one of the artists that have come out of that um, Carlos Barrios with with a, with a track that I'm really that to be honest has been one of my most successful tracks. I mean, I have a lot of other great tracks out there that are doing well, but that song and um really made it for me. Mm -hmm. uh, that song really, you know exemplifies what a new school freestyle should be all about and you know i can only be grateful for for, for that and and it sh and, and it shows in every performance when i i mean that song got to a point that um here in the east coast anywhere i perform it people know it they're loving it they're rocking it and i'm blessed for that you know well, no, no doubt, man. We're going to jump into it in just a second before I let you go, but you mentioned some of your other stuff. Let people know about what else you got out there and how they can get a copy of it. Okay. Um, right now, they can get... Right now, uh, unlike other artists, I know a lot of artists, they're, they're uh, into selling their music, you know, and pushing it that way. I, I take a different formula when it comes to that because I'm a person that believes that especially in this day and age, especially freestyle as the genre that it is, it needs, you know, all the help that it can get. I, um, I allow people to get my music for free. Okay. Um, because I believe that the more it's in the hands and the hearts of people, they, then they'll want to come and see the, the show because nowadays you, you can, you, you can sell a CD, you can sell a track and, you know, the first person will buy it, second person will buy it, then the rest of them will just download it mm -hmm. from somebody. And it's not to knock off on anybody, it's just, that's just a reality. That's just the way the nature of business happens to the big um, uh, music um, industry uh, platforms as well as freestyle. So I believe in giving out my music. It, like, uh, like you can find my music on Reverb Nation. You can download all my songs on Reverb Nation. Just look up... J Magicus there. You can look me up on SoundCloud, J Magicus, same way. Because um, as long as the music is being played, eventually I believe it will get to where it should get to open up a better platform to get the music on the radio. You know, it, it's, it's interesting that you, you mentioned that, uh, that uh, thought process you have there. And the way that I take from that, is that what you're doing is you're getting the music out there for free to build the buzz. And then when people come see you at shows, then you actually have product for sale where people want, want you to want to buy it so they can have you sign it. So it's a good, uh, good way to go about, you know, so basically you're selling your autograph. Yes. And, and, and the reason I do it that way is because I, I know for, I know I keep, I know the reality of it, you know, you know, especially when it comes to freestyle, especially for a new artist, you know, you could do 
multiple CDs a year. But if it's just going to the same people because you're trying to sell it, mm-hmm. then chances are it's only going to be the same people listening it and your market is a, is a smaller market. Right, right. You know, I, I know a lot of DJs and a lot of people that they want your music. And I understand, you know, because look, I, 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 I get right now I produce my music myself. I got I, I got a strong team behind me that does my music now. It costs money. I get all that. I understand that. But at the same token, you have to look at the reality that most people are, you know, most people are just going to get, are, are going to just download it. I mean, you, you see what happens on YouTube. People just take things, mm-hmm. you know, that's just the reality of it. So the, if it's going to happen, I'd rather give my a good quality version of my music to anyone who wants to hear it and then make it back um, doing shows and being booked. Right. Because now right. now you become... Because they can always take your music. They can always download your stuff for free. But the one thing they can't take away from you is your talent and your performance. You can't duplicate that. You got to come to the shows. Yeah. You know, I, I agree with you on that. And it's a, it's a, it's too bad society is the just the... Um, is accepting uh, the way it is now and so easily satisfied because... Honestly, to me, to the trained ear, if you listen to the stuff that's on YouTube, they put a weird filter on all their music. So when you download the audio off of YouTube, it just doesn't sound right. So, you know, you should get that high quality, uh, you know, stuff from like an actual like uh, music provider instead of just a a YouTube. But people, you know, they don't want to do that. They just want to steal everything. Exactly. And and that's why I I just get the music out there because... It, you know, that's the best, you know, the, the, you are the product. And as long as people are hearing good music, they'll come to your show and you become, you know, you can get yourself booked on bigger events. I mean, you've seen what I do. Mm-hmm. You know, I get booked on a lot of events um, all over. It took time because you know what? When you're working hard in your craft, it takes time. It takes a lot of perseverance. And trust me, unlike what a lot of people want to tend to believe, you get like 50 no's before you get a yes. You yeah. know, that's just, that's just a reality also. Uh, and uh, as long as you, as you keep pushing and, and putting out good product, because not just putting out, tra- you know, put out a track today and work on that track so people get to know it, put it out there before you start going crazy on the next track. Because that's how a lot of tr- tracks get lost in the shuffle. Yep. Yep. You know, Absolutely. You know, like, I heard a few songs that were really good, but because the people went to the next song or the next album so quickly, never got a chance to really, you know, solidify itself among the people that were listening to it. Mm-hmm. And, and sadly, these songs get forgotten. Yeah. You, you know, I mean, that that's just how I feel. And like I said, it's just my opinion because I know a lot of people, you know, especially down here in the East Coast, when I tend to say something, people tend to, you know, take it the wrong way because there's a lot of competition and I understand that. But at the end of the day, they got to understand that we're all in this together and we're all out here, even though we do it our own way, even though some people want to have their own clicks and all of that. At the end of the day, uh, we're all in this together to push the music forward, you know, despite our differences. Right. And, right. And whether or not you don't agree with someone's way of doing things, respect them and love the fact that they're actually pushing because every little helps. Yep. Freestyle, especially new school freestyle, because old school, they already established, they got their fan base, they, 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 make, they make their due on the memories that they put up from the 80s. But the new school artists, you know, they're still building. We're still a work in progress. But, you know, there's a lot of potential. Absolutely, you know? man. Absolutely. You know, and, I don't, and, and I don't say that a lot of people, I, and I hear like what a lot of people say, they say that freestyle's dead and freestyle, you know, some people do say that, and I tend to hear that from older people. And I understand what they're saying because, you know, I do agree that, that freestyle has, ha, is not, it's going to be very difficult for freestyle to be mainstream. And I do agree that it will take a young person to take it so a younger crowd can get it. 
But for those that enjoy it, for those that relish new freestyle music, which for those that feel freestyles in their heart, I commend everyone who's out there, you know, you know, keeping keeping it alive, whether you're past or whether you're present, you know? There it is, man. There it is. Hey, if people want to catch up with you on social media, how they go about doing that? Oh, they can go on my Facebook page. They can look under J A Y R Gomez. Um, I couldn't put magic is because YouTube. I mean, Facebook now has all these rules. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> so you can look me up as J A Y R Gomez. Uh, on Facebook, on on uh, Instagram, you can just look me up as J Magicus. On Twitter, J Magicus, and um, and and on YouTube, same thing, J Magicus. There you can see all my videos, and and if they want to really find me, they can just find me through good people like you who are sharing my music True and right. um, helping me um, be who I am, Magicus, to face a new school freestyle. No doubt, man. No doubt. Before I let you go, definitely got to uh, send a shout out to you from Jezarita and the twins. They're out there checking out the show. She's a big fan of yours. Well, Jezarita, I love and appreciate you and the twins and everyone who listens to me. Man, I, I promise you, if I if I get to California and I will, I'm definitely going to be there. We're going to hang it, have a good time. And I'm going to rock the house for you, just to let you know. There you go, man. There you go. So we're going to jump into the Can't Live Without You right now. Uh, hold on the line. I'm going to talk to you off the air. But uh, thank you so much for taking the time to call in tonight. And we got to get you back on the air real soon, man. Thanks, man. But thank you, because without people like you, there's no one like this. There's, there's no magicus, and there's no new school freestyle. We need more people like you, man. There it is. All right, man. We'll be back in a second right here. It's 90.9 KHDC.